Breathe easily from this point on. Again, tonight, the two most important things, no matter where you are, from now on, make sure that you're always breathing comfortably and that you're also seated safely. Finally, relax the muscles within your shoulders and your neck, even your facial muscles, unless your scalp nerve follow you throughout the night. From now on, every time I touch you on the shoulder, this can help you to drift 100,000 times deeper in hypnosis. Throughout the night, every time I touch you on the shoulder and then say the word sleep, when I say the word sleep, instantly your eyelids can close down rapidly, helping you to drift deep into our now, deep if you've ever been before, and I want you all to realize that starting right now, as you become more receptive, you can begin to drift much deeper into hypnosis at a much more rapid rate. From this point on throughout the rest of the night, with your cooperation and with your open mind, you can experience a variety of things. Now, tonight your experiences might surprise you. Even if you get surprised, though, please don't get scared because even if it looks like you're the audience, once again, I guarantee you are not losing any control. With hypnosis, you are gaining control over a powerful part of your mind. And within your mind, anything can be possible if you commit to this, if you cooperate, and if you keep an open mind. Now, still breathing easily, slowing down even a little bit more, feeling comfortable, seated safe, and a few months will hear me count from one to three. When I reach three, you can find that your eyelids will become so heavy, so tired, when I reach three, you will find that you cannot open up your eyelids no matter how hard you try. When I reach three, the harder you try to open up your eyelids, the more tightly closed those stage will drift and even deeper in hypnosis. Even if you feel awake, even if you feel conscious and normal, your unconscious mind understands that it has the power to keep your eyelids locked down tightly, shutting out the light as you will drift down even deeper to sleep. Here we go. One, eyelids locked in very tight and get tighter with each breath you take with each sound you hear. Two, eyelids well detected are getting tighter and tighter. For all of you, finally, three, eyelids locked down very tight. And in fact, you can actually try to open up your eyes, but they will not come undone. The harder you try, the more tightly closed the stage you will drift in even deeper in hypnosis. If you have been trying, if you would for now, just for now, please stop from your eyes. But if you would continue to breathe easily, Breathing comfortably, slowing down even a little bit more, also seated safe. Now I'm gonna ask all of you one more favor on stage, also in the audience. From now on, if you would please, take the suggestions, not only seriously, but if you would please, also very literally. Now with your eyelids so closed, in a few moments you'll hear me count from one to three. When I reach three, I'd like to please bring your right arm up from your lap, not doing it just yet, but in a few moments you'll hear me count from one to three. When I reach three, then if you would please, I'd like to bring your right arm up from your lap, then to extend your right arm directly straight out in front of your body, making a tight fist with your right hand as you drift even deeper into hypnosis. If you're in the audience near a table, you can bring your arm above below the table. The table's not in the but it does not even bother you at all. The last thing for all of you is this though, when I reach three, if your arm does not come up on its own, in that case, when I reach three, if you would please then purposely force your right arm up from your lap, then extend your right arm directly straight out in front of your body, then making a tight fist with your right hand as you all drift even deeper into hypnosis. Here we go. One, two, three. Right arm coming up from your lap, please, if you would now. Then you make your right arm as stiff and as straight and as rigid as you can from your shoulder to your wrist and a tight fist with your right hand. Literally, if you begin to test the muscle your arm as much as you can from your shoulder to your wrist. In fact, for all of you, if you much you can from one to three, for all of you, seriously, for all of you, literally. With each arm that I can, if you would, begin to test the muscle of your arm even more. When I reach three, you can find that your right arm becomes so stiff, so straight, so rigid. When I reach three, you'll find that you cannot bend your arm to the elbow. To reach three, the harder you try to bend your arm, the more rigid it becomes. You'll drift any deeper into hypnosis. Here we go. One, arm like a steel bar, really pushing out from your body. Two, getting stiffer, getting straighter than it's ever been before. For all of you, finally, three, arm locked like a steel bar. In fact, you can actually try to bend that arm, but it really will not bend. Try as hard as you would like to. The harder you try, the more rigid it becomes. In a few months, you'll hear me clap my hands one time with a louder soft. It does not need to disturb you. However, when I clap my hands, then gently and very easily, your right arm can suddenly relax, then slowly and very gently dropping down to your side or in your lap. Eyelids remain closed, drifting even deeper into hypnosis. As I clap my hands, right arm just relaxing easily. Here we go. Arm just relaxing easily, comfortably coming down to your side or in your lap. Eyelids still remain closed. Seated, safe, breathing easily, now letting go of all the tension. If your eyes are closed right now, once again, if you would please continue to keep your eyes closed. In a few moments, you'll hear a round of applause from the rest of the audience. A round of applause you're about to hear will be a signal for you to keep your eyes closed, to drift even deeper into hypnosis, and a nice compliment for your very deep concentration. From the audience, would my please just a real nice round of applause. Good for everyone.
Since I've been talking with you, I don't know if you realize this or not, but uh, whether it's the air condition that's on or the heat that's on, <clears throat> something, it's really dried the air out in here a little bit, and so I do apologize for that. And I, uh, I'm sure you can tell by the way I'm talking that my mouth's a little bit dry. But I'm sure as well that with you breathing the same prayer that I'm breathing in, I can only imagine with every dry breath of air you take and feeling your mouth getting a little bit dry and a little bit thirsty, <clears throat> a little bit pasty. As your mouth can begin to dry more and more with each and every dry breath of air you take, and you might even begin to think how nice to have something cool to drink a glass of water, pick the drier of the ears. I know the more dry and thirsty and pasty your mouth can become. And now as your mouth might begin to dry out more and more, I want you all to realize there's a lot of misconceptions about hypnosis, and a big one is big misconception people have is that they think your eyes have to be closed to be hypnotized, but that really is actually not true. In fact, not just yet, but throughout the night, there'll be many times where I'm going to ask you to open your eyes. Not yet, but throughout the night, every time your eyes come open, this might surprise you, but when your eyes come open, you can feel a burst of energy. You can feel strong, feel rested, feel energetic. You can feel like you're wide awake. Although you can feel like you're wide awake, open your eyes and help you to drift 100,000 times deeper in hypnosis. Every time your eyes close, more deep than you've ever been before. Every time your eyes come open, obviously the lights in the room are on, but the lights in the room are on, your eyes can adjust easily. The lights and the lights do not need to disturb you. As your mouth might continue to dry it more and more with every dry breath you take, and I want you all to realize that in a few moments you're going to hear me count from one to three. When I reach three, within easily letting your eyes come open, not yet, but in a few moments you will hear me count from one to three. When I reach for foot, easily, very naturally, just letting your eyes come open, and then suddenly feeling great, really feeling strong, also feeling rested, having fun, energetic, but still deeply hypnotized. And then realizing there's a group or in a game, a little contest, once your eyes come open, I'm going to ask a question. When I ask a question, I really will need you to raise your hand quickly, hoping that I call on you. When I call on you, if you answer correctly, we'll win the door prize that we have here this evening. It's a great door prize. This is something that I know you would love to win. Although my question might seem simple or easy, that doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what it is. Once your eyes come open, when I ask a question, I really will need you to raise your hand quickly, hoping that I call on you. The unusual thing, though, is this. What tries from now on throughout the night from now on? Every time you raise your hand into the air, the very moment, the very second you raise your hand up, instantly, when your hand goes up, your mind will go completely blank and you'll have no conscious memory for the answer to the question I just asked you. Once your eyes open throughout the night from now on, every time you raise your hand, when your hand goes up, your mind will go blank. Your mind will then remain blank and nothing. I'll repeat that and absolutely nothing will bring your memory back. If you bring your hand back down to your lap, that will not matter because your mind will stay blank. If you hear the answer from anyone in the room, in other words, if you hear the answer from anyone in the audience, anyone on stage, even if you hear the answer from me, it'll make absolutely no sense at all and your mind will also stay blank. If you read the answer, something that will not matter because your mind will stay blank. Once you raise your hand up, your mind will go blank and will stay blank. In fact, there's one thing, and there's one thing only that will bring your memory back. That is when you hear me snap my fingers directly next to your ear. When I snap my fingers directly next to your ear, then, and only then, your memory will return to you. But for now, energy can actually start to build. This might surprise you, but right now, every breath you take, feel... Your body getting stronger, mouth getting a little bit more, more dry, energy beginning to build, feeling absolutely wonderful. And if you want to hear me count from one to three, when I reach three, easily letting your eyes open, feeling great, really strong, feeling rested, having fun, energetic, still deeply hypnotized, wanting to win the door prize so much that no matter what energy says or does, every time I ask a question, I know that you raise your hand very quickly. But every time you raise your hand, when your hand goes up, your mind will go blank and will stay that way. Feel your body getting stronger. Let the energy easily get, begin to increase. I'm going to count from one to three. One to reach three, easily letting your eyes open. Feeling great, really rested, also strong, having fun, energetic, but still deeply hypnotized. Here we go. One, two, three. I was coming to feel nice relaxed. Well, it's great to have all of you up here. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling good. We are down to our final question, and this will be for the door prize, so please think carefully. When I ask the question first, first raise your hand. I don't want to see this will be for the door prize, so here we go. For the door prize, please tell me what is your name. <laughs> I do believe that you in fact were for some of you can right over here with you. <laughs> I'm going to get back to you in just a moment. That's the look we're going for. Right over here as well. Nice to have you up on stage. I'm going to go, let's see, right over here as well. And right over here. I know it's kind of weird, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to go up another right here. Of course, you are. Right. Nice to meet you right here as well. Always a pleasure right here. Right. Nice to meet you as well right here. Yeah. Always a pleasure. And James. nice to meet you also. You know what we're going to do? We're going to throw that question out. We're going to go to the bonus round where prizes actually double in the bonus round. I'm going to get you some water here in just a moment as well. But before going to the bonus round, I'm kind of curious just so I know any idea at all. I just want water. I don't blame you. 
Did you know when you came in? That would make it tougher. If you're doing great, you're going to the bonus round, prize is double, so that'll be fun. As it turned out, there is, because someone was very, very thoughtful and very nice to do that, so we'll, we'll do that. Absolutely. There we go. Just so I know, and I assume that most people do, but is there anyone in the audience who knows this? Yoni's in my rear. Just so I know. Anybody who knows her? Well, you do. Okay. Yeah. Real, real quiet says she can't hear. Her first name is? Nicole? Okay, cool. No hints. Ex <laughs> name on the Nicole name. <laughs> Any idea at all? I just... Why is he winking at me? <laughs> <laughs> is he kind of at times sometimes fun and flirtatious? No. <laughs> then I have no idea why. <laughs> Nicole, your first name is?
I'll be on stage in a few minutes, we can't get the one and three. I'll keep doing that tonight. When research refuel the landing, you're asking about. And the weird thing is, although one person asks for a glass of water, all of you with each breath, you can feel your mouth is getting more moist, more moist, more comfortable, not quite as thirsty, you feel a little bit better. When a research room asks about, you realize some people at the stage, no matter who left them, you don't really care. It doesn't need to matter. One trust book again, sitting back and joining the show, having a nice time. But at some point, you'll hear me say the color green. No matter where, you never feel sick or get queasy in any way. I also know that you always realize the odor is clearly coming from the audience and not from anyone on the stage. I've been doing this for a while. Once your eyes open throughout the night, I would sometimes say the color red. Doesn't matter where you are, but when you hear me say the color red, I know you'll suddenly realize a very nasty odor will suddenly disappear. Not only will the odor disappear, but say the color red, in this place begin to smell a wonderful, actually a springtime fragrance, almost like a floral bouquet smelling so good that you cannot get enough of that wonderful fragrance. If I be the color green, the nice fragrance will instantly disappear, the nasty odor will return again, and so on and so forth. Never sick, also never queasy, but always amazed, really surprised, also shocked to find how quickly, how often the smells can change with the colors green and smelling worse than before, rather than springtime. Once again, never caring that anybody else has left the stage. When I reach three, eyes come open, smiling big, full of energy, still relaxed, having fun, but still deeply hypnotized. So one, two, three. That's my nice relax. I always like to check in early on so I know, is everyone up here doing okay so far? So far, so good? Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> By the way, I think the bar's gonna be open throughout the rest of the show, and then I was told that uh, when I'm done, there's gonna be dr drinks, right? Um, where was they gonna be? Uh, bar. At, at the bar, yeah, drinks at the bar, which makes sense. So here, <laughs> everyone in Jacob's room. <laughs> they send back to you. But here's the deal. If you're drinking tonight, please don't drive. Drinking and driving is a really bad idea. And if you are driving, make sure you go through the intersections. You know, like, so although it's associative, it's also important to be thinking like G for green, right? Then G for go. So green and go, safety first. That's the point I'm trying to get across to you. Like, what first caught your attention? Hello. 
do some more for lights. Like a glow or something? You don't want to hit. Oh, so it actually contacted your trailer park, and that's when you first noticed it. Yeah, but it was, it was loud. <laughs> Can you describe or explain the kind of loud or the kind of noise that it made? It was a, it was a big buzz. <laughs> so I was thinking more like you were talking about the explosion, but you're talking about the sound of the spacecraft as it was moving. That was the sound. So, uh, were you scared? Were you excited? Did you go to investigate? Did you try to get away? Like, what did you do? I hid. <laughs> scary. I think that's what I would have done. I mean, I'm not walking in your shoes, but I would think that I would have like You should. <laughs> And you were there as, as well, is that correct? I'm tooting, I was. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was terrifying. <laughs> tell me a little bit about your experience, what you saw, what you heard, how you felt, what you did. Like, tell me a little bit about it. She said darn thing. I was out of town, and I just saw them. And they were landed in the mail of a town. <laughs> they destroyed everything. <laughs> That's too much. Are you okay? She's so terrible. <laughs> would, would you like to share your experience? Look at it, though. You know, you know, it, was, it was terrible. You know what's interesting? In a moment, I'm going to gently snip my finger next to your right ear. And when I do, you're going to realize that everything's going to be taken care of and everybody's going to be made whole and they're going to get their houses back and then they'll have a really good story to tell and you're going to feel so much better about it. In fact, it'll happen just like that. So, so, she said, what, thank so you. What, can you explain a little bit about what had happened? There was a spaceship in the sky and it, it, it came and then there were babies. But them babies weren't human. I don't know what them things were. <laughs> well, you could tell by looking at them that they weren't human. Well, they weren't, they weren't like a normal pregnancy. It's like, you saw that movie, right? You know, the one with the, the alien and it just got... And that's why they were explaining before. It was kind of scary, a little bit That's what's important. Yes. Because I, I ain't have no insurance. <laughs> Hard to get insurance for that. <laughs> insurance company. Wow. And do they offer that particular form of insurance? Not for people on drink <laughs> So unfair. Do you know why they came down? Why they chose your community? How they ended up in your neck of the woods? Do you have any sort of insight as to that? Think that they don't like Alabama the things we do over there. <laughs> See, I work with her in the insurance company. Not that Bama thing. They just you think that UFO aliens don't like Alabama. <laughs> yeah. With Jacob. That is so specific. <laughs> well, I don't know why they didn't hit no other trailer park. <laughs> I miss what you said, I beg your pardon? There was another one I heard on the news. It was on them CNN thing. No, he wants the wrong news. Were you aware of that? I didn't know that. <laughs> well, we're going to break up into small discussion about this momentarily, but before doing that, is there anything else you would like to share with Congress go back before we break up into smaller discussion groups? Anything else you think is important for them to know? I can't. Tell him, James. Is there something more? I think they also hit the dogs ram in my yard. <laughs> yeah, of course. Such a good truck, though, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to take a brief recess for a moment to make sure you're seated safely in your chair. Then, with your eyes closed for now. When I reach three. 
not now, but later, when I reached through, the moment, the very second, the instant your eyes come open, feeling great and seated comfortably in your chair, but here's what's weird. When I reach through and your eyes come open, your right hand, you'll feel a tingle, a twitch, a something in the fingers in your right hand. You might look down, you might not, but what's going to happen is the second your eyes come open, your right hand is going to start floating up from your lap on its own. And if you look down and notice it's floating up, you might think, well, that's weird. It's never done that before. When your right hand gets about face level, it's going to come to life. It'll come to life like a ventriloquist puppet or dummy. Your right hand will have its own name, own identity, own personality. In fact, your right hand can think and talk. When your hand talks, it'll talk by channeling its thoughts through your mouth. So when you talk, Nikki, it's your voice. When your hand talks, it'll be a real voice that'll come out of your mouth. It'll be a different voice than yours with different thoughts than you have. And the weird thing is you, Nikki, will find my comments rude knowing I'm being a jerk to the audience, but your right hand will find my comments funny, and your hand is going to start laughing at my comments. When you notice your hand laugh, that might make you angry with your hand, which will make the hand laugh even more. I know that you might argue with your hand, but your hand is not going to take shit from you or from anyone. It's a happy-go-lucky, fun-loving right hand. Although you might argue with your hand, argue with it if you want to, but this is what's important. Please don't ever physically hurt the hand in any way. I've learned a lot of things the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> All of you, when it reached free, eyes come open, wonderfully strong, really feeling great, really rested, energetic, happy to be with us, but made really shocked to find how rude of being loud is once to start using words, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. One, two, three. Yes, but nice, relax. I just wanted to thank all of you so much for coming up here because honestly, first of all, I can't do a show without you. And secondly, it's just so much fun to work with so many creative, wonderful people. And I just, I really appreciate that. And um, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be out of here shortly, and then, and then uh, Jacob's going to come uh, up after me and say a few words. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's just been, it's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun, and I, and I had the opportunity uh, to meet some people from Altus yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, then I got a chance to meet a few more people uh, today, and then uh, come here to the show. So that's uh, just been a wonderful experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been um, yeah, actually a, kind of an interesting road for me to take getting to the point <laughs> are you okay? No. You need to apologize. Why are you saying that to That's rude. Have I, have I gone too far? Yes. <laughs> you need to apologize. You can't be saying that to the audience. Oh. Why would you even... <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, an apology? So here's the thing, and you know what, you make a valid point, you make a good point. So let me just say this to everyone, getting on stage does not give me the right to be a uh, rich people. It really just, and sometimes I get carried away, and you know, we had some conversation about language that was appropriate, making sure that it was a good experience.